بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن عدوهم Imam Rida alayhi salam has a statement in which he describes his son Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. Now it's an incredible statement and what I want to do in this short series is to try and focus and zoom in on this statement just to try and understand and make sense of it. The Imam says, هَذَا الْمَوْلُودِ الَّذِي لَمْ يُولَدْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ مِثْلُهُ مَوْلُودٌ أَعْظَمُ بَرَكَةً عَلَى شِيعَتِنَا مِنْهِ Now, in order to understand the gravity and the significance of this hadith, we need to take a step back. You see, Shia creed today has gone through many twists and turns before it was crystallized towards the beginning of the reign of Imam al-Mahdi In other words, belief in an Imam who has been in occultation for over a thousand years and who became an Imam when he was only five years old, this belief is a given now and is taken for granted. But that's only because the prerequisites for these beliefs were firmly established in a gradual manner, like building a wall one brick at a time. The idea that a person is divinely inspired and acquires his authority and knowledge from God and no one else, this idea was vociferously challenged by all humans at first. This is why prophets had uh, been rejected by the majority of people in the beginning of their mandate. Likewise, the Imams were initially seen as merely virtuous and good people. But with time, people came to realize that they were much more than that. That they were endowed with divine knowledge and authority, which entails a slew of other incredible um, uh, factors like infallibility and supernatural powers. So how did that come about? Well, it came about by carefully observing the successive Imams at major turning points. And one of those turning points was the birth of Imam al-Jawad. Hence the famous statement of Imam al-Rida alayhi salam about his son. هذا المولود الذي لم يولد في الإسلام مثله مولود أعظم بركة على شيعتنا منه. Essentially, this translates to the following. Imam al-Rida alayhi salam points to his own son, Imam al-Jawad, and says, this is the newborn who has no equal in Islam, a newborn whose blessings upon our followers are unprecedented. That's a significant and bold description. He's unique. He's unprecedented. The greatest blessings are brought by this child in the entirety of the religion of Islam. It's a fact being stipulated by the eighth Imam and naturally draws a lot of attention. So what does that mean? Well, I'll mention three points that stem from this statement. Number one, blessings. In our uh, supplications and devotional literature, we have specific supplications that have been narrated by the likes of Al-Kaf'ami in both of his books, uh, Al-Misbah and Al-Balad Al-Ameen, both of which are compilations of supplications and devotional uh, du'as. And these particular supplications, they're divided over the 12 hours of the day. So in other words, every hour of the day, meaning the daytime, um, has a specific supplication that's ascribed to it, that is recommended um, for it to be recited. Right? So you've got 12 hours, 12 supplications. In each of those, there is a, a supplication in which you beseech and you seek the intercession of one of the Imams. May God's peace and blessings be upon them. Now what's interesting is that with each of those Imams to whom there is a supplication attributed, in each of those supplications, 
you ask for a specific set of things and you uh, acquire the intercession of that Imam for the fulfillment of those needs. For instance, when it comes to the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali alayhi salam, you ask Allah to allow him to intercede for you specifically for seeking justice from oppressive tyrants, right? For vengeance against despots. For Imam As-Sajjad alayhi salam, our fourth Imam, you seek his intercession for protection from authorities to be safeguarded from harm so that governments and other forms of political authority do not hurt you. When it comes to Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, you seek his intercession for the calamities of death and what happens when we're buried and we're inside of our grave, right? When it comes to Imam al-Sadiq, our sixth Imam alayhi salam, you seek his intercession to be protected from the dreadful events of the afterlife, the things that will happen on the Day of Judgment, right? Things like resurrection and reckoning and uh, being held to account for our actions. Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam, likewise, you seek his intercession specifically for attaining wellness and health in our bodies and uh, to not be afflicted with disease. Imam al-Ridha, our eighth Imam, you seek his intercession for safety and protection during travels and when you uh, go from one place to another, right? So again, the idea is that for each of the Imams, you seek their intercession for a specific set of things. So these are supplications that have been prescribed and narrated by our Imams themselves. So what about Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam? Remember what Imam al-Rida said about him. He said, no one has brought out, brought about greater blessings upon our followers than this newborn. So in this dua, going back to those devotional books, we read the following. Ya man da'ahu al-muftaruna fa'ajabahum wal taja'a ilayhi al-kha'ifuna fa'amanahum O one who has his servants pray to him those who are in affliction, those who are hopeless and destitute, they reach out to him and he responds to them. People seek refuge in him, those who are frightened and terrorized, and he provides them with safety. I ask you, then we say, and to salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. We ask you to send your blessings upon Muhammad and his family, wa an tajuda alayya min fadlik, and that you give me of your generosity, of your uh, fadl, meaning virtue. وَتَتَفَضَّلَ عَلَيَّ مِنْ وُسْعِكَ بِمَا أَسْتَغْنِي بِهِ عَمَّا فِي أَيْدِي خَلْقِكَ O oh Allah, give me self-sufficiency, give me sustenance, such that I don't, I don't feel the need to go to your creations. I don't need to ask anybody. وَأَنْ تَقْطَعَ رَجَائِي إِلَّا مِنْكَ and that you sever my hope in everyone except for yourself. And I want you to disappoint my hopes except in yourself. Muhammad. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, once again to send his blessings upon Muhammad and his progeny. And that you uh, expand on the sustenance that you have deprived me from. So essentially what happens here is that we ask Imam al-Jawad or we ask Allah in the name of the ninth Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Jawad to uh, increase our sustenance and to increase the uh, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, but specifically sustenance, livelihood. Those people that are going through financial trouble, those of us who inevitably fall into problems of all sorts and kinds when it comes to uh, matters of money and wealth and poverty and so forth, Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam is the one to seek his intercession. 
He's the one and in His name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us with those needs. So that's the first thing that we extrapolate from the statement of Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam as to why he says that this newborn is unprecedented, he is unequaled, he is unique in uh, every way and then the Imam specifically mentions barakah, uh, blessings that this child will bring. So this could be one of the meanings of that statement.